Hello and welcome to our short power tagging demonstration. This video aims to illustrate the concept of power tagging and demonstrate it in action using integration we have built using Umbraco CMS and Pool Party Thesaurus Manager, together with a semantic extraction engine also created by Pool Party, who are market leader in semantic technologies. My name is John Baker. I am the CEO and founder of Digirati. I am joined by my colleague Donald Gray, who is a solution architect at Digirati and has been working in this area. Firstly, we will give you some high-level theory and then we'll get cracking with the demo. Okay, first coming on to the theory, I don't want to go into too much detail, just enough to help the demonstration click into place as you see it. So uh, this diagram should hopefully provide the necessary background. Uh, you can see we have three main components, the content store, the taxonomy manager and the website or portal. So the content store could be a content management system, a document management system or a digital asset management system. We could also be working with multiple instances of one or more types of system. Any of these systems could have a power tagging module integrated that will extract taxonomy terms that are based on your taxonomy from the content or metadata that you are working with and suggest them as tags to be applied to your content. The application of these tags is subject to manual approval the power tagging module will also allow you to manually suggest other terms that might be appropriate to be added as tags but are not currently in your taxonomy. If you do select new terms you can then submit them as new candidate terms to the taxonomy manager for permanent inclusion in your taxonomy. The taxonomy manager has its own workflow for approval of new candidate terms. This is what we mean by the cycle of enrichment, as these new terms are then utilised by the power tagging module to extract and suggest better tags in future. Using a powerful taxonomy manager such as Pool Party, you can further enrich your taxonomy using tools such as text corpus analysis, extending with existing vocabularies and ontologies, and creating knowledge graphs using linked data. This wouldn't be possible if your tags were embedded in your content, which is common practice at the moment. This rich semantic tier can be used to drive powerful discovery layers for your content, improving search functions, finding related content, facilitating personalization, and so on. And importantly, if you use the same taxonomy for multiple content stores, then power tagging can be used as the basis for a discovery layer that can traverse what would otherwise be content silos. I think that's probably enough background for now. Don't worry if all the concepts are not familiar to you. Uh, the demonstration should provide further illustration. So without further ado, I will now hand over to Donald, who will show you these concepts in action. Right, so this is a demo of the Power Tagging plugin. It's going to use Umbraco as a content management system and Pool Party for the thesaurus. Uh, the thesaurus that we're using for this is around uh, renewable energy. So. As you can see, the terms such as greenhouse gas emissions, fossil energy, uh, what we'll be using. So this is a very simple search and search results listing page. So on the left hand side, you've got basic faceted search and search terms and on the right, the search results. So the obvious thing here on the left hand side, you've got a number of checkboxes. This is just standard faceted search functionality, um, all driven by the thesaurus, which in this instance is in pool party. So if I click on greenhouse gas emissions, you can see there there's 28 results. Click on that, filters down the right hand side to show um, those results that match and also further filters down the list of faceted search results on the left hand side. So if we reset the search results, which just gets us back to the starting point. Um, from here you've got an autocomplete search box. So what this does when we start typing, so if I want to search for carbon offset, you can see that we've got carbon offset, voluntary carbon offset and carbon offsetting systems. All these search results are coming directly from the thesaurus. Uh, so if I click this one, carbon offset, it just takes the term and populates it into the search box, hit search, and then it shows you in the middle column here, the results, anything that is related to carbon offset. Um, and on the right hand side, a more detailed look at the carbon offset term. So it's got the title here, um, a description which is built directly from Pool Party, any broader concepts, related concepts, and narrower concepts. So if we go into the thesaurus here and search for carbon offset, 
all this information such as definition, related terms, narrow terms, broader concepts are all pulled from here. Um, so what I can do here is click on a narrow concept, carbon units. This basically kicks off a new search, populates carbon units here and pulls um, the details of carbon units through from the thesaurus. So now that we're searching for carbon units, um, there are currently no results within the content management system that are tied with carbon units. So what we can do now is go to Umbraco, log in as in this instance the admin user. Um, nothing special about the, the setup of the Umbraco content. So we've just got some basic home mode, but what we're interested in are underneath resources, we've got just an item container called texts and each of these um, contains the various items that are searchable and surface in the search results. So if we click to create a new text item and this one we are calling it carbon units. That's just the, the name, title, uh, text to extract. So this is uh, the actual copy that you would use for the content. So what I'm doing here is just going to Wikipedia and grabbing some text on carbon credits. I'll just copy that, come back to Umbraco, paste it in here. So that's just some basic um, content around this. So if I save that, so it's inside the content management system. And then from here, uh, I click this extract text concepts button. So what that will do is it will use a uh, pool party to look through the thesaurus to find any matching terms for the text and also suggest any terms based on their corporate analysis. So if I hit that, it shows it's working. So what we've got in the top here is the extracted concepts that are already in the thesaurus. Uh, you can see that carbon dioxide, carbon credits, each of these and the, the number here represents the frequency. Um, so this is five times, three times. Um, and this one, as you can see, is a slightly darker colour of grey. That's because it's the most frequent term, which is just carbon, which appears 13 times. By default, any terms that are found within the thesaurus are added. Um, and you can remove them if you want. So this is the mitigation projects. I might not think that's relevant. So I can remove that and I can also remove carbon intensity. Document extracted concepts. These are suggested concepts that are not in the taxonomy um, but by analysing the contents of the text uh, these are suggested that you could add them so I can click on any of these individually or you could click add all items to add all of them but I know that I just want to add credit dioxide and ton so as well as adding the suggested terms. Um, I can also use this autocomplete box to find any tags that I want to add that weren't um, present within the copy that I used. So I was originally uh, searching for carbon units um, and that term has not appeared here. So if I search for carbon units, it's added. Um, it's a dark grey to show that I've manually picked that. Um, and the, within the brackets here there's no number because it doesn't actually appear within the document. So if I save and publish this, you can see when I hit save that it's of all the suggested terms only those that I've added have remained. So there you go, content published and visible at the website. So if I come back here, search for carbon units, I now get one result based on the article that I've just added uh, and the fasted search has been shown. So every term that I've tagged it with is now appearing within the fasted search. Um, and so we got to carbon units from coming, searching for carbon offset, going to an arrow concept. So if we go back up to carbon offset, uh, this is just a little example to show that all the results are updated effectively as soon as the content is edited. So if we go back to carbon offset, the fasted search results here show that carbon offset the seven documents with that um, tag. So if I go back to the content, this isn't one of those that has carbon offset here. So if I search for carbon offset, save and publish that, 
again it's dark grey and there's no number because dark grey signifies we've manually added it and the no number shows that there's no no occurrences of carbon offset within the copy down here. So content published invisible come back here so if I research for carbon offset so there's seven results search again and now there's eight and one of those should be carbon units which is down the bottom here and again you can use show similar which shows me any articles within the content management system that share the similar tagging the final step that we can take here is um, the cycle of enrichment that John mentioned in the initial slides and this is to take suggested terms and feed them back into the thesaurus so if I go back to the carbon units article that we created we've got dioxide, ton and credit as suggested terms that are not currently in a thesaurus and you can also add uh, your own terms so I can come here and add uh, eco tax so I can start typing that it will find everything that starts with eco but there's nothing with T so eco tax only one item so if I select that appears in here again it's dark grey and there's no number in the bracket showing that it doesn't appear within the article so if I save that and what that's doing is as well as saving it as normal and indexing it for search it's pushing eco tax up into the pull party thesaurus as a candidate term. So now that that's finished and saved if I go to pull party um, so this is the main thesaurus here on the left and underneath there's a lists element and then within that the suggested concepts. So if I search for equal tax you can see here the preferred label and that can be added as a narrow, narrow concept alternative label or top concept of anything so I could add that as a narrower concept of environmental taxation and you can see here we've got climate governance environmental taxation and then a narrow concept of that is equal tax and then from here you can start to expand your thesaurus by giving that a definition um, alternative labels adding narrower broader concepts of that the final step then is to go back to the front end and um, change the search term to equal tax which we've just added. So if I do equal T, the lookup finds equal tax, so select that and search. And then it displays the carbon units article that we added, the broader concepts here and also any other terms that are relevant to the search results so in this case it's only the one single article that we have added. Thank you Donald. I will now quickly wrap up by recapping on the benefits of using this system and integration. Firstly you will save time applying tags to content through automation. Terms and concepts used for tagging are based on specialised taxonomies and vocabularies for better contextual quality versus a generic auto tagging service such as Open Calais for example. These specialised taxonomies and vocabularies continue to develop as part of your day-to-day -day content workflow in a cycle of enrichment. And by decoupling your taxonomy management from a specific content repository, you can create a knowledge network that can be managed and enriched independently as an asset in its own right, and you can apply it to new information systems in the future. And remember, because this is decoupled from content, you can improve discovery layers, including search, related content and personalization working across system silos and even across multiple organizations. I hope you found this video informative and we at least managed to convey some of the potential with these tools. There's a lot more to explore once you get started. Please do not hesitate to get in touch if you'd like to learn more. Thank you and goodbye for now.